Hey y'all, I'm breaking down everything you need to know about Loki season one so that when season two starts in just a couple of weeks, you're not asking yourself what the hell is going on. Obviously, before we get any further, there are spoilers for Loki season one. So if you think you're going to have some time to watch Loki season one before season two drops in just a couple of weeks, I highly recommend that you stop watching this video right now. Okay, to make sure we're all on the same page, the Loki in the show that we're talking about is this Loki, not that Loki. Confused? Let's clear it up. That Loki attempted to kill Thanos, and Thanos pretty much knew what he was going to do and ended up thwarting his plans and killed Loki in the process. The Loki in this show is a variant Loki when the Avengers went back in time to help save the universe, and they travel back in time to the Battle of New York when they had Loki apprehended. In this timeline, though, the Tesseract landed in Loki's hands, and he used that to escape, which landed him in the Gobi Desert in Mongolia. Not long after that, we see troopers arrive through a time door who arrests Loki on crimes against the sacred timeline and that is when we are first introduced to the TVA or the Time Variance Authority. When Loki is brought into the TVA he's basically unable to use his powers and goes through a series of tests as a prisoner basically confirming that he is the real Loki. From here we learn about the background of the TVA through their mascot Miss Minutes who is actually a little bit more than a mascot and I'll get to that later in the video. Essentially we're told by Miss Minutes that the TVA was created created by the timekeepers to essentially uphold a single timeline to make sure that another multiversal war does not break out. The TVA and its workers are tasked with protecting the sacred timeline and pruning any branches and variants that have been created by a Nexus event. Whoa, 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 whoa. Sacred timeline, Nexus event, Let's clear those up too before we get any further. The sacred timeline is basically a singular universe and reality that the timekeepers want to protect and uphold. A nexus event is when any being basically creates a branch from the sacred timeline, therefore creating a new branch of that timeline, which ultimately the TVA does not want to have happen. And so they go ahead and prune it and erase it from existence. The main thought is, is if there are too many branching timelines and that they interconnect and create an increase that there could be again another multiversal war which is what the TVA and the timekeepers want to stop from happening. Now that those definitions are out of the way we then see Loki brought forth in front of a judge, Judge Ravana Renslayer, for his crimes against the sacred timeline and basically pleads that he is not guilty because he wasn't brought back in time it was basically the Avengers fault. However Judge Renslayer says that the Avengers actions were predetermined and that Loki escaping was not predetermined and says Says that he is guilty and orders him to be pruned. That is when we get introduced to Agent Mobius M. Mobius, who pleads to the judge that they could possibly use Loki in a case where a variant is killing TVA agents. Loki is then brought to the time theater by Agent Mobius and Loki questions how all of his actions could be predetermined if he has free will. To refute this fact, Mobius shows Loki future events in his life including inadvertent events that led to his mother's death. Loki then attempts to escape and during his escape comes across multiple infinity stones that have no power and it is at that point that Loki realizes that the TVA must be the most powerful entity in the entire universe. As Loki heads back to the time theater, he sees more events in his future, including his repaired relationship with his brother, as well as his death at the hands of Thanos. After realizing that he is no longer able to get back to his timeline, he confesses to Mobius that his wrongdoings were just out of an effort to control his life. It is at that point Mobius tells Loki that the variant that is killing TVA agents is actually another Loki variant and Mobius asks Loki to join them in helping to find this Loki variant. That brings us to episode two, where Loki joins a TVA squad that goes back in time to an attack by the killer Loki variant. They find that TVA trooper Hunter C-20 was actually kidnapped by the killer Loki variant, which is important to know in future episodes, and we'll obviously get to that later in the video. After returning to the TVA, Loki and Mobius do more research as to where this killer Loki variant might be hiding out in the timeline. Loki determines that the killer variant is hiding in near apocalyptic events undetected by the TVA because essentially no branches would exist because nothing would survive after that apocalyptic event. Loki and Mobius then determine that the killer variant is hiding in 2050 in a deadly hurricane located in Alabama. Loki, Mobius, and a TVA team of troopers including Hunter B-15 all go to this determined 
human time. During their search, Loki and Hunter B-15 are ambushed by the Loki variant, who uses enchantment to possess bodies of locals as well as Hunter B-15. Loki tries to convince the variant to join him in overthrowing the timekeepers. However, the killer variant denies this request and then reveals themselves as a female variant of Loki who goes by the name of Sylvie. She then sets off several stolen time charges across the sacred timeline to throw the TVA off. This takes us right into episode 3 where Loki and Sylvie are teleported back to the TVA and eventually confronted by Judge Renslayer. In an effort to escape, Loki uses a temp pad, which is a really fancy flip phone, to teleport himself and Sylvie away. They teleport to Lamentis 1, which is an inhabited moon which is going to crash into a planet relatively soon. It would of course be super simple for them to just teleport away, however the temp pad they have has run out of power. While on this moon they essentially spend their entire time looking for power to recharge the temp pad, unfortunately it breaks in their quest in doing so and then they realize that there is essentially no way off of this moon. This is when Sylvie tells Loki that all of the TVA employees are variants. Sylvie was able to determine this because when she took Hunter C-20 as a hostage, she used enchantment to tap into her memories to figure out where the timekeepers are hiding. And in doing so, she found other memories of a previous life that Hunter C-20 had. Loki realizes that none of the TVA employees know this because they've all been told that they were created by the timekeepers. This brings us right into episode 4, which at the beginning we get some background into the beginning of Sylvie's life. We learn that a young Sylvie was arrested by then Hunter Ravana Renslayer for, again, crimes against the sacred timeline. During Sylvie's trial, she stole Renslayer's temp pad and used it to teleport somewhere into the timeline. We're brought right back to the TVA where Mobius is talking with Judge Renslayer and asked to talk with Hunter C-20. However, Renslayer says that she died secondary to a mental breakdown from Sylvie's enchantment. They are then alerted to a nexus event occurring on Lamentus 1 because Loki and Sylvie form a romantic connection, which was strong enough to create that nexus event. TVA troopers arrive on Lamentus 1, arrest Sylvie and Loki, bring them back to the TVA, and of course, separate them. Before Loki is put into a time loop, he tells Mobius that all the TVA employees, including himself, are all variants. Mobius tells Loki that he doesn't believe him, but we do see that he becomes curious because at his next interaction with Judge Renslayer, he purposefully switches out his temp pad for her temp pad and then finds on Judge Renslayer's temp pad a video interview of Hunter C-20 who is totally mentally sound and confirms what Loki had just told Mobius about everyone being variants. While this is happening, Hunter B-15 is distraught with her own existence and takes Sylvie back to Alabama in 2050 so that she can talk to her with no one else around. Hunter B-15 says that she got a glimpse of past memories when Sylvie initially enchanted her in episode 2 and then asked to be enchanted again to see if those memories are real. It is then at that point that Hunter B-15 realizes that she had a past life and is also a variant. Mobius then frees Loki from the time loop and is approached by Judge Renslayer and other TVA troopers. Mobius confirms his betrayal to Judge Renslayer and also acknowledges the fact that he is a variant. Mobius then gets pruned, essentially seemingly to be killed right in front of Loki. Loki and a recaptured Sylvie are then brought in front of the timekeepers by Judge Renslayer. With the help of Hunter B-15, Loki and Sylvie are able to escape and Sylvie then chops the head off of one of the timekeepers, revealing that they are mindless androids. At that point, Loki tries to tell Sylvie of his feelings for her, but at that point, Judge Renslayer goes ahead and prunes Loki. A very angry and upset Sylvie apprehends Judge Renslayer and demands to know the origins of the TVA. This is the only episode with a mid credit scene, which is where we see Loki waking up from being pruned. He believes he's in hell, but then is approached by four variants of himself who convince him to follow them to safety. We go right back to Sylvie and Judge Renslayer, where Judge Renslayer tells Sylvie that she does not know the actual origins of the TVA and that Loki actually went to the Void. The Void is a dimension at the end of time where everything that is pruned goes there and basically doesn't return. At this point we see Miss Minutes return who is searching for files on how Sylvie can get back to Loki. However, she's really just stalling until TVA troopers come to apprehend Sylvie. This is where we actually get some more insight to Miss Minutes who is a little bit 
bit more than a mascot because also later in this episode, she continues to give wrong information to Judge Renslayer because she also doesn't want her to know all of the background to the TVA and to ultimately find out that she is also a variant. Once those TVA troopers come and get Sylvie in an effort to not get captured, she prunes herself, sending her to the void. As soon as she gets there, she's basically chased by Eliath, which is a massive cloud-like creature that hunts and kills everything in the void. While on the run from Eliath, she is saved by Mobius. While this is all happening, Loki and his four variants, Classic Loki, Boastful Loki, Kid Loki, and Alligator Loki all go back to their hideout for safety. While in this hideout, they are ambushed by another Loki variant, President Loki, and basically they all betray each other and start a huge fight. Classic Loki helps Loki, Kid Loki, and Alligator Loki escape the fight and move on. During their quest, they end up connecting with Mobius and Sylvie. With a temp pad that Sylvie stole, Mobius returns to the TVA to inform all of its employees that they're all variants. While that's happening, Loki and Sylvie determine that the only way to get to the creator of the TVA is to go through Eliath. Their plan is to enchant Eliath and they start to do this however they struggle. That is when classic Loki comes in and creates a huge illusion of a real life sized version of Asgard. With this distraction, Loki and Sylvie are able to enchant Eliath, thankfully due to classic Loki because he sacrificed himself in this process. After enchanting Eliath and walking through him, they approach a citadel at the end of the void and walk right up to the front door. The front door opens and they go ahead and walk in and they are approached by Miss Minutes who gives them a deal from He Who Remains. The deal from He Who Remains is for Loki and Sylvie to stop researching into the TVA and if they do, that they will be given the lives that they've always wanted, including winning the Battle of New York, becoming the ruler of Asgard, and killing Thanos. However, Loki and Sylvie reject this offer. Back at the TVA, Mobius approaches Judge Renslayer, where they both confirm betrayal of each other. Mobius tries to prune Judge Renslayer. However, she opens up a time door and says that she's going in search of free will. Also during this time, Hunter B-15 is chased by other TVA troopers. She leads them to a school in Ohio because that is where the original Renslayer variant is as a vice principal. That is when the other TVA troopers finally believe Hunter B-15 that they are also variants. Loki and Sylvie make their way further into the Citadel where an elevator opens holding He Who Remains. He Who Remains tells Loki and Sylvie that he has seen all of the events in the past and into the future which is why he is able to escape and avoid any attacks from Sylvie during this time because he knew that they were going to happen. He then explains to them that he created the TVA after himself and multiple variants of himself met each other in the 31st century. He explains that most of the interactions between the variants and himself were friendly, however some of them were not so friendly with them trying to conquer each other's universes, which led to the multiversal war. He Who Remains was able to create the sacred timeline after harnessing the powers of Eliath, using it to conquer all of the other variants of himself, and then created the TVA to stop any other branches from happening. He then tells Loki and Sylvie that they basically only have two options one of which is to take over the TVA and rule it and be the keepers of time, or kill him and risk another multiversal war with multiple variants of himself who are way worse than he is. As He Who Remains is explaining to Loki and Sylvie why they would be great to take over the TVA and the timeline, his demeanor quickly changes from happy to grim, stating that they just crossed the threshold, stating that he has no knowledge of what occurs beyond the threshold. At this point, Sylvie still doesn't believe he who remains while Loki does. Sylvie insists on killing he who remains but Loki tries to stop her which causes them to fight with each other and Sylvie then just accuses Loki of wanting to take over the timeline and the TVA by himself. At one point during their fight Loki just tells Sylvie that he just wants to see her be happy and then they kiss. Or Loki kisses himself? Who knows? Who cares? Loki's in love. Sylvie then opens a time door with Loki's temp pad, pushes him in it and sends him back to the TVA 
NBA. Sylvie then kills he who remains, and while he's dying, he looks at her and says, see you soon. It is at that moment that we see the sacred timeline splinter into countless branches. We're brought right back into the TVA where we see Loki run into the TVA library and he comes across Mobius and Hunter B-15, telling them of the impending doom of he who remains. However, Mobius and Hunter B-15 do not recognize who Loki is. We then see Loki look out into the TVA environment, noticing that the three statues of the timekeepers are gone with just one remaining and it now looks like a variant of he who remains. We know that season two actually starts out in this exact spot where Loki is looking out at this statue. And if you want to actually know what happens in the opening scene of the first episode of season two, you'll want to check out this video. I appreciate you watching and you should be all caught up on season one. Until I see you in the next video, Excelsior.